Blog Talk Radio. Good evening and welcome to comic to, to uh, Pop Culture Stars, formerly Comic Con Stars. I never can get that right. It's good to talk with everybody as we are here the day before Valentine's 2019. So far, we have Papa Stro and we have Todd with us. Others expected to be joining us. Uh, it's a great pop culture day. Um, or it's actually been a great couple of pop culture days. I'll share that um, looks like I got a phone call from the media in Charleston a couple of days. Well, actually yesterday morning, apparently uh, 12 people called into a local FM radio station and they had a sighting of Bigfoot on Interstate 26 north of, uh, north of Somerville. And I mean, they didn't get any names or anything, and the police are trying to track it all down, but everybody was pretty serious, and people saw something walking along the side of the road for Bigfoot Charleston, so we will see what uh, what happens on that one. They'll keep me apprised. I believe that, um, I guess we broke the story uh, between all the, uh, the, the various uh, Facebook pages. We broke the story, and people are getting excited about it as we head toward the Georgia Bigfoot Conference on um, April 27th in Clayton, Georgia, Rabin County Civic Center. So a lot of Bigfoot av- uh, activity there. Um, I'm getting calls left and right, and people are walking up to me telling me about sightings in uh, the central South Carolina area. Not at all what I expected. Again, when you're out uh, Talking about the Lizard Man Festival, which is coming up May 31st to June 1st in uh, Lee County, South Carolina, at the South Carolina Button Museum. You know, when you're, when you're out talking about uh, the Lizard Man Festival, people walk up to you and they want to talk about Lizard Man and Bigfoot. Those are the two things they want to talk about. So I was out today uh, just talking with some folks, delivering some posters, and got three brand new Bigfoot stories we're going to have to try to track now. We might have an evening uh, of, of those folks on somewhere, somehow. But anyway, it's been an exciting Bigfoot week for me, and uh, just glad to be here as we are looking down uh, looking down the barrel to uh, Valentine's Day, uh, February the 14th tomorrow, and uh, got some activities going on there. We'll talk about those as we hit the... Um, the wrap up and the plug section. And I see, let's see, first of all, Papa Stro. Doing good. Uh, staying busy and uh, just uh, recovering from uh, all kinds of uh, various things. But uh, back in the saddle again, as they say, and a lot, a lot of stuff coming up. Um, uh, Knee Deep in the Dust series right now, season three. We're filming season three. It's uh, looking really good for all you Dust Series fans. I'm really excited for you guys to check out the upcoming season. Uh, a lot of new uh, characters in the series will be uh, debuting, as well as a lot of interesting uh, stories to be coming out of Season 3. So looking forward to you guys to check it out. And uh, this, uh, towards the weekend, I'm going to be uh, on set again for uh, a trailer to a new uh, horror film that will be a part of called Supernatural Assassins. So get, getting right for that. Um, reuniting with uh, some of the cast members that I worked with on the set of Deck Dracula's War some years back. So uh, looking forward to uh, reuniting with uh, some of the cast members and uh, being part of Supernatural Assassins coming up. So it should be pretty cool. Well, that sounds like a great movie. I, I want to hear. I want to hear more about that when things uh, when things get closer. Now I know this past weekend, if I'm correct. You and uh, Ronald Rossman and members of the cast of Dusk were at the uh, Statesville Comic Con, correct? Yes, uh, and, and that was a success. Actually, it was a great Comic Con to be a part of, and uh, looking forward to be a part of it again next year. Uh, 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 everybody at Statesville Comic Con was uh, it was class act all the way, and uh, it was a pleasure to be part of it with uh, my fellow cast members of the Dusk series. So it, it was a good time. Well, that's great. I, I saw some photographs of it, and it looked like it was really good. So glad you had a good time. Glad Dusk was successful uh, this past weekend at the Statesville, North Carolina Comic Con. And um, just best wishes to everything as it moves forward. We've all got a lot of a lot of good projects. Now, Dave, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not Dave, Todd 
How are you doing? Wow, I'm we look so much alike. <laughs> Pardon? Yeah, like we look say? so much alike. You guys are twinning tonight. <laughs> yep. So anyway, well, when you're looking at this control panel, I don't see everybody, so it just it just does whatever. How's how's everything for you, and what you got going on? What you got going on that you'd like to share with us? Well, I um, I got something. I'm going to if I can uh, follow through off to the side. It may be bringing us a blast from the past. Um, I had a brief conversation with uh, my neighbor's son. Um, known him most of my life, um, and he was a uh, his own celebrity at a certain point. So I'm going to see if I can. Uh, we we may have to do a classic rock night. Here on uh, Comic Con Stars, or uh, Ooh, geez, yeah. pop culture stars. See, there I was well, heard that slip. The pop Listen. culture stars because uh, he was yeah. one of the biggest names in the business at one point, as far as uh, DJs go. Really, really. Well, um, we'll try to get him on as soon as we can. That'd be great. Yep, I'm not going to ask much from him. It's, you know, it'd be a personal favor, but the you know, he he knows I'm darn sure taking care of his mom over the you know every time I come back here and I make her take the time to double check, make sure you know she needs anything, she has it. The uh, um, do that kind of stuff. So that's one of the things I'm working on on the side. The uh, so I got that going on and um, got to say um, I don't know. I try to save some stuff for the for the plug. I've uh, the nephews Good. and. Uh, I have been uh, real busy given the circumstances. Right. Well, we can uh, we'll certainly chat about that. But thank you and thanks for thinking about pop culture stars. Uh, when you meet some of these um, celebrities from yesteryear, we'll call it yesteryear, and especially someone that's been involved yeah. in classic rock. We all, I think, we all love classic rock. So, so thanks yeah, a lot. And, I, and I will show. throw out, of course. I, I do apologize because I missed my usual. I am, of course, outstanding the supernatural. <laughs> well, you're always that way, so we that is something that we expect. And uh, thanks a lot. That, that that's good. And now the Queen of Sparkle is joining us, Liz Bracken. Well, how are you doing tonight? Hi. As always, I'm fine. This frog hair split three ways, buddy. I'm holding. I'm living my best life right now, I think. <laughs> I get to spend the evening talking to you guys. I um, I don't know. My life just seems to be in a really good place. Like everything. Have you ever been standing in the middle of what you would consider an eye of the hurricane of your life? It's like everything's kind of spinning around you. There's nothing really solid holding you to the ground, but you're kind of in the center. For, for a few brief like moments, you're just like, oh, this is exactly where I need to be. I don't have to rush into anything right now, and I just need to take a minute and like re- regroup and rebuild, and that's kind of where I am. So I'm having this like very zen, serene time in my life. Well, that's wonderful. Now, I tend to have complete and total havoc. 24 hours a day and wake up at five o'clock and say, gosh, what do I got to do today and get going on it? But uh, that's great that you're in that position. I guess, I guess you needed it. You wanted it and you got it. People, people need to realize uh, for what they wish, they may very well receive it. And uh, I've always wanted to have it. That's right. But if you kind of want it, it'll happen, but that's good. and, And we're really glad. And uh, what I'll say to everybody is we we were batting around a number of topics for tonight. Um, I wanted to just start with one that that I think is important. It's important in our culture. And it comes thanks to Emperor Claudius in Rome. Back in uh, the first couple of centuries, they were eradicating paganism and converting to Christianity and they needed a February holiday. So it turns out that they honored St. Valentine, who uh, did a lot of great things for people. However, he ultimately got uh, executed because he was busy marrying a number of couples, and he wasn't supposed to do that quite yet. 
But Valentine's Day has become a real part of our history. It's something that we all uh, really look forward to. Uh, we can say nice things to uh, people that we know and care about. And uh, I would just like to get any comments that you folks have on Valentine's Day. I mean, you know, it, it came to pass here that uh, it was widely accepted throughout the business community when, uh, you know, Hallmark jumped on board with it like they did Mother's Day and Father's Day. But, you know, that's not bad. I think it's, I think it's important that we take time to celebrate our relationships with other people because that's the one thing. We tend to do that toward the holidays but we don't tend to do that during the year. And I think, I think Valentine's is a good time. I'm going to go back in reverse order. Uh, Liz, what do you think about Valentine's Day? You got any thoughts to share with us? Yeah, of course, you know. Um, <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind is I don't want to say like I'm anti-Valentine's Day, um, but I feel like, you know, you shouldn't have a specific day to remind you to be kind to people. And that's not to say that I'm not going to bring my wife flowers on Valentine's Day or something, but, you know, I just don't I, – I, the premise of Valentine's Day, at least the way that I interpret it, is that this is the day where you prove to your loved one that you think of them more than anybody else, and then you spend exorbitant amount of money just to try to make them feel special. But I'm the kind of person where I do that all year long. Like, I can buy a Christmas present in July for somebody, and I can't wait three weeks to give it to them. I can't wait till Christmas. So, like, I'm constantly just trying to show the people that I love that I love them all year long. So, for me, it, it's kind of like a, not only say a thorn in the side kind of thing, because, I mean, any, any day that encourages you to spread love and peace and prosperity to the other people, I'm all for it. But I just don't think that in a relationship you should guide your love on holidays. I think you should steer your own ship. I don't know. That's just where I sit on it. I'm kind of funny about it. No, and, uh, that's not funny. That's I, I, I can't disagree. <laughs> and so, Todd, you're next anyway. So why don't you continue commenting and tell us what you think, and then we'll head back head back around to Papa Stroke. We're going with that. The um, well, it's a it, it's a time of the year where r- roses are the highest price, and how the heck that those? I mean, I've looked up some of the lore and saw some of the meanings <clears throat> of some of those things. But you 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 know it, it's um it's definitely got too commercial for me, so I'm going to bring that you know I'm going to bring a little less and being all love about it. But it is uh it's good that they have a theoretical day that you're supposed to show love to the you know a little extra. I, I guess let's call it a little extra love beyond the normal love, which I hope is thinking enough. But they're sweetest day too. The um, look the if the people we care about and love don't know it, then we're doing something wrong. The other three hundred exactly the odd days of the year. Just just saying. I mean we, I mean sure some days are going to be better than others, but I'd like to think that um, we're doing some of those little things. The uh, you know the the. the with the fact that you'll, they know that every meal that you make, you're making it with love. You're putting a little bit of you into it for them. Just yeah. some of those little things. It's just, uh, and you know, I, I did mention to my, uh, uh, I'm just, I'm just going to call her my sister-in-law, even though they got divorced before he died. The, uh, with my sister-in-law and my nephew, the three of us sat down and had dinner and, um, I told them, I go, well, heck, uh, just before I even thought about the podcast tonight, I told them, well, I guess you're, given the circumstances, I guess they're my Valentine's this year. And that was, that's pretty stinking solid that we could just sort of sit down together and have a meal and quietly just share, just share and be together. I mean, it's those kind of moments that should be our Valentine's Day every friggin' day of the year with our loved ones. <laughs> And uh, I can kind of like you, you, you all know how much I value the show every week. I mean, I, I yeah. get to sit sit down and for some reason where you guys have slipped your sanity, you've decided to include me with this. It's uh, it, it's an amazing part of my life, and I am beyond grateful. So yeah, I mean, it's these little things like, God, it, it, it's awesome. 
But I, you know, I honestly believe you guys know that you're loved other than every Thursday or Wednesday night. Just saying. That's a great thing to say, Todd. Thanks a lot. I think uh, a little more love might help the world sometimes. It really should. What do you think, Papa Stro? Well, since uh, in uh, phone text chat that Liz made a comment about uh, she wanted to learn something tonight, uh, in the spirit of that, uh, I would like to discuss the origin, the origins, plural, of Valentine's Day, which is actually a pagan festival in February. While some yes, believe sir. that Valentine's Day, while some believe that Valentine's Day is celebrated in the middle of February to commemorate the anniversary of Valentine's Day, actually Valentine's death, rather, or burial, which probably occurred around A.D. 270. Others claim the Christian church may have decided to place St. Valentine's feast day in the middle of February, in an effort to, quote-unquote, Christianize the pagan celebration of Lupercalia. Sub- Celebrated at the I- Idols of February, or February 15th, Lupercalia was a fertility festival d- dedicated to Faunus, the Roman god of agriculture, as well as the Roman founders of Romulus and Remus. To begin the festival, members of the Luperci, an order of Roman priests, would gather at the sacred cave where the infants, Romulus and Remus, the founders of Rome, were believed to have cared for by a she-wolf, or lupa. The priest would sacrifice a goat for fertility and a dog for purification. They would then strip the goat's hide into stripes, dip them into the sacrificial blood, and take it to the street, gently slapping both women and crop fields with the goat's hide. Far from being fearful, the Roman women welcomed the touch of the hides because of its belief to make them more fertile in the coming years. Later in the day, according to the legend, all the young women in the city would place their names in the big urn. The city's bachelors would each choose a name and become paired for the year with his chosen woman. These matches were often ended in marriage. There you go. <laughs> wow. Interesting. Very cool. And if you want something that's really maybe not so cute, you know that the um, little heart image that we happen to, you know, people happen to draw and such is actually just the reverse of the woman's bottom. The source <laughs> says a uh, oh. variation of that. So I'm just, just pointing it out. As well as the woman. new uh, Bojangles biscuits, they have their heart shaped biscuits now. Really? Mm-hmm. Now you're making them the butt of the joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I hear. I, I hear I guess what they you get chicken out of that one, right? I guess they get chicken <laughs> out of that one. <laughs> wow. Gotcha. Well, you know, this has been illuminating, and uh, I guess the reason I picked this this topic for us to talk about, of course, you, you folks can certainly pick any topic you want, but I think this week the rhetoric out of Washington, D.C. has been so vicious that I just wanted to hear some good things, because regardless of politics, regardless of anything else, we have to live together, and if we can make it good for everybody... We're going to have a better world. I, and yeah, I know I, that's just old-fashioned. And, yeah, well, there's this great number one song called Put a Little Love in Your Heart. And uh, it probably wasn't a bad idea back then uh, during the Vietnam War. And it might not be such a bad idea today during the political wars. I mean, you can get as mad as you want to at somebody else. You can uh, talk about real conspiracies and collusion and everything else. But... We need to try to live a little bit better and be a little happier. I mean, I was busy today. It was just crazy. But I was happy. I had a yep. good time. I talked to a lot of people. And, and you know, that, that's, that's what it's about. And, Papa Stro, I know that you have lived a very, very hectic life, uh, more hectic than mine. I mean, traveling all over the world and this and that and this and that. I'll ask you the point-blank question. 
When someone was nice to you, didn't it make your day better as far as you were from home? <laughs> well, I, I as much as I've traveled, any niceness, I'll take any niceness I can get. And whatever food's in front of me, I would take, <laughs> more or less. Whatever shelter I would have, I would take. I mean, the life of a traveling gypsy, you know what I mean? But as far as um, as far as far uh, politics in the world goes, uh, there are times I wish I could I'm, – I'm sure you guys feel this way too. There were times I feel like I was Snake Bliskin from Escape from L.A. to where I could push that button to shut down the world. <laughs> Right. <laughs> if any of you all see, if any of you guys seen the end of Escape from LA, you know what I'm talking about. We shut down the world because the president, the government were corrupt, he, and he was going to execute his own daughter and all that. It was it was messed up. But and 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 it's funny to mention about the uh, the Roman Empire, the beginning of the uh, uh, podcast. Uh, there was a report about a lady that found like a four thousand dollar. $4,000, actually, in the Rise and Fall of the Roman Empire book, in which she actually was nice enough to give that $4,000 back to the proper owner. And, wow. Uh, how, how, I mean, how rare is that? <laughs> but back, back to the Rise and Fall of the Roman Empire, I do believe we are living it as we speak. And, and and they say history doesn't repeat itself. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it, just like Rome, we are making the same mistakes as the Romans did years ago. You know what I mean? The same mistakes and arguing with each other. The right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing, and vice versa. It, it, it's a cluster. And 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 while while us in the middle, we're going. What are you guys doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> Because <laughs> we're just caught in the middle of the crossfires, you know what I mean? It's crazy. That is true. Yeah, we sometimes are in the middle, and and we shouldn't be, uh, but we are, and we have to make the very best of it. And hopefully, uh, if we will be attuned and pay attention to what's going on, we can learn from. I, we're 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 more dysfunctional right this. now than Game of Thrones. And that says something. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> went, That's hard to do. Went, 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 winter's here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that vortex was. Winter's coming. Yeah, the wa- <laughs> the, the walkers the are coming to get us. <laughs> <laughs> they and, are. And the times like these, the times like these, Hound is my hero. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> I love Hound. He's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, you raised you raised a good point. You know we're here, we're caught in the middle. I'd like to ask each of you, what should we do? Talk about a good point of question. What should we do? I feel you know we all feel like we're kind of in the middle of this thing with the Get spectacle in, in the meeting. Pardon. <laughs> Get along for starters. <laughs> Can we all just get along? Right. <laughs> I, think my, I think my mother said that one be time. Be nice. Can't we all just get It'd along? It'd be nice. Mm-hmm. Well, I sure learned that when I said, I don't think so, I found out that was the wrong thing to say at that kitchen table. So it put it focused every it focused everyone on me, and I think it kind of like uh, dissipated. So I took the hit on that one. I said I don't think so. I don't think we can get along. Mm-hmm. God, I was seventeen. I was, I knew so much at seventeen. You know, come on. But uh, yeah, we, trying to get along is is the best thing. But uh, sometimes it's hard to get along. It's it's sometimes hard to yeah. get along. You, 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 but you know what? Not necessarily. I mean, where would we be if everybody saw everything exactly the same way? You all know that I love my food. The, uh, mm-hmm. What if we only had one recipe for any given product, I, I, any given vegetable, any given cut of meat, any given, you know, I mean, any given starch? That would be stinking nuts. The thing is, 
Yeah. Just because somebody has a different recipe concept, at least look at it. Check it out. Consider it. Broaden your mind. Broaden your scope. The whole thing is, look, you may not necessarily like it when you try it, but give it a go because it may turn out to be like, holy crap, I had no idea how good that was going to be. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we we can make different choices. We can we can do different things and be different and still get along. It it is possible, you know. It really is. Yeah. Look, you, you guys. Uh, Liz hasn't got to meet her, but the um, you guys, you guys bloody well know Yuki. The uh, there's a lot of things between Yuki and I we're very different about. Now, mind you, over the decades, we've definitely grown together on a lot of things, but we're very different, and we have definitely changed one another, and I would really like to believe for the better. <laughs> um, you know, I really would like to believe it's been for the better, but it, it's just, you know, that's stuff that don't happen to it in a day. It's taken a lot of effort, but I, I you know, I mean, I, I I look at things like Darian and I say, well, we got something right somewhere down the line. Just saying, you know, it, so it takes effort. You you got to work for things. People want stuff too damn easy. They want their own damn way, and people just I I, I think it's sheer indolence, indolence across the doggone planet, not just here, but across the planet. I mean, there was a time when people used to say, if you want something, you got to bleed for it. Now everybody yeah. says, if I want something, I'll pander to the government. They'll give it to me, especially if it's somebody else's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I never had that. I guess that's why I like being a workaholic. What do you think, Liz? <laughs> what can we do? Um, I kind of like the analogy of food we were talking about earlier, so I'm going to kind of keep on with that train of thought. But I think that, um, you know, one of my favorite foods has always been Mexican food. I love it. And I feel like Mm, mm -mm. everybody has, everybody has that one thing that, you know, I, I can never go in my kitchen and cook Mexican food. I can't do it. Like, I cannot get the flavors right. I cannot get the seasoning just right. I cannot get the love in the food. Like, I can't do it. And I and I acknowledge that I am a terrible chef, and I cannot do that. I can make a chicken pot pie all day long. That's fine. But I cannot make Mexican food. Now, everybody has that one thing that they really like that they can't make. But had we not branched out and learned other cultures, much like you were talking about, being open to other cultures, we never would have experienced a burrito, nachos, which is actually, you know, like the whole – Americanizing of, of you know the culture, but even street tacos, like it's a big thing. Everybody is starting to be able to expand and explore different cultures. So I think if we can take the opportunity instead of immediately like shunning different and open eyes to different, maybe then maybe we don't even know how good we could be until we open our eyes to the differences that everyone brings to the table. Like I really think that there's a way if we all could just kind of be open and learn from each other and not, I mean, and when I say listen to people, I don't mean listen so that you can argue back and plan your you know, argument in your head. I mean, listen to someone else and actually understand where they're coming from, or at least try to. And if you don't understand, don't pretend you do, but you know, you give, you give yourself and you, you know, you accept other people, you're open and you're absorbing other cultures, other lives, things you may never have imagined someone else could have gone through you know, and, and I think that, that changes you as a person. And, and I think if we were all just more open to other people and accepting that instead of, you know, shoving these people in the corner and only dealing with these people, why don't we all just kind of like see if we can't mesh together and, and make something better, build something bigger, have a better enterprise. You don't know what you can bring to the table that someone else may need, and you don't know what someone else can bring to the table that you may need. And I feel like if we just open up, maybe we'll have an opportunity to do that. Yep, at least consider it. Now, I'll throw this out there, Liz, real quick. 
Now, Central South American food, you dig it, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, just for the record, do you know that in Colombia and days of old, do you know what one of their favorite food products or that one of their favorite or really a legitimate staple in their food products is now a pet in many households across the planet? What? Guinea pigs. Guinea pigs? Really? Look, I I think this is a really cool example of how things change. The breeding has changed in it. The, the, the guinea pig today isn't exactly the guinea pig of yesterday. Uh-huh. But sure enough, it, 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 was a, it was a food staple. Wow. And it's just, if things can change that much, and get it, I get it, it wasn't overnight. I'm just saying, things change. Yeah. Things change. A food source became a pet. Of course. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm in a house with three cats right now, and in certain places, boy, they'd be much. What? You know, well, given their age, they they would no longer be considered the deal of the feline. But uh, <laughs> I got one that's been fat nicely and would be considered like big dollars. The uh, but hey, you, you know what? They're pets here. It's okay. Yeah, we love them. We really do. Different cultures. And the whole thing is, all right, so what? They used to do that. Big deal. Big deal. But yeah. Things are different. Things can be very different. Just don't completely freak out when you hear something. You know, maybe take a second, bite your tongue. Digest the thought before you react. I'd like to show where we kind of got to react a little bit quicker, but I'd like to think that we can think on the fly. What say you? Well, this is Dr. John, and I'll say that um, whatever you say will probably get retweeted. So <laughs> whatever you say goes on the record in 2019. Didn't used to be that way. People would say, well, I'm not going to say that, and they didn't. And sometimes I feel kind of silly when I try to keep a secret, although I will. But, yeah, and and I guess what was unimpressive to me today was Twitter. Every single tweet was something bad about somebody else. And I was was really surprised. I'm going to make an effort tomorrow, because it's Valentine's Day, to send out a good tweet about everybody on here, even Dave, who's not so sure about Bigfoot. Right, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bigfoot. Still on the fence. Are you okay. Bigfoot, Dave? No, I'm not. I'm a size 11. <laughs> I don't know. I, I heard somewhere, Dave, that Bigfoot shaved. And that's yeah, when you were first noticed. I heard that yeah, that's somewhere. <laughs> I, hopefully I read it somewhere. Had to work overtime to get all the hair off of me. <laughs> I am the pick me okay. size Bigfoot. We're going to start so sli- sliding from there in your shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I get, that was just, again, rounding back to this, and we certainly have other good things we can talk about. But I just, I guess, wanted to hear some good things because it was such a, a downer day in, in the media. And uh, I shouldn't have to go through that. Um, so thanks. Well, you. Everybody here has helped me. I'll tell you that. I, I, may I throw out something kind of funky, weird, kind of cool, neat, Mike? Of might course. be upbeat, it might be just kind of deja vu ish. All right, so back in the day, um, we used to go to a particular high school's Friday night games. Uh, there were a couple of us families, and there were a couple, three places we would go to to go eat after the game. 
And um, the families had quit doing it at a certain point. And so many decades go by. And so um, now here many years later, my brother Mark and I, sup, Mark, um, go ahead. <laughs> and uh, on Sunday, we do DoorDash. Thank you, Liz, for picking up on that. The, uh, I love it. So Mark and I do, <laughs> will do DoorDash for Mom on Sunday. So we found this place. Didn't think nothing of it. It's called Lowell Street Cafe. And they, they were open on Sunday. I was like, let's try something different. Let's hit this place up. So we got an order in for Mom. And uh, so we know this place exists. Well, we happen to be up here, given the circumstances, for, uh, in Ohio. And so Mark and I are like, let's sample some of the places that are on the DoorDash menu so we can make sure we really have some legit quality control for Mom, right? So we go to this place, and because we happen to be using a different route, it escapes Mark. He hasn't been there in nearly 50 years. It escapes me. I haven't been to this place in like something like 42 years at best. We go there. We hit this place. This is one of our old after game haunts. And just because it's got a, the, the building had burned down and got rebuilt, but it was much the same style. But I will be darned if mom did not suss it out and say, this is the old Penny King. And I was like, God, Mom, I thought that place was almost a myth because I couldn't remember it. I couldn't find anything on it, stuff like that. And so there's a group of these, uh, I tell you what, this tells you how old they are because I'm thinking they were old concerts, and you all already know that I I smell massively of Ben Gay and Polygrip. The, um, <laughs> those, those old concerts, they were they were like, well, yeah, the old KT. And uh, it, was, it was just kind of cool because we figure the math comes up to something like 42 years or so since we happened to be there. And we found this place under a different name. We we're just random circumstances. We all ended up there. And it's just like massive flashback. So it was actually kind of a cool, neat, deja vu, just stuff thing. It was pretty stinking cool. At least Hello. 42 years since we'd all been there. Just kind of well, cool. It was good. It was good to get back. Yeah, and uh, we have those. We all have those moments. We really do. And they're great. Yeah, I I hope that story was half as cool for y'all as I feel it. I uh, I probably failed to translate it well. It was just. Yeah, I probably fell short. Sorry, guys. No, it was good. No, it was I'm, good. It, I'm absorbed in it. I'm really enjoying it. Like, I've had moments like that, too, and I'm just relating to it. Like, it's kind of the deja vu thing, it's like, I, I remember um, the house I grew up in, uh, one of the houses I grew up in, anyways, was dozed down because it was right next to a hospital, um, and then they dozed it and used it to make a parking lot for the hospital after we moved. And a couple months ago, I was driving by it, couldn't find my house. And then there was one particular spot next to this, this lake where we, I would sit and I would look at the lake. And nothing was the same except this one little angle on the lake. And I was just looking at it, and it took me back. That's but everything else is different. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's cool. A lot of different here. Yep. Well, those are those are good those are good stories to think back, Papa Stro and Dave. You got it. You got a, You got something that takes you back. Yeah, whiskey. <laughs> okay. We're not talking about last night. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> We're not talking uh, about last night. Uh, I, I, uh, I, I got to throw something out, Dave. My kid. The um. You guys know that a lot of the my focus lately has been my brother that just passed. He, um, so we went back to the old uh, the drive through pick up the beer thing routine and all that. And one of his favorite beers, Dave, was PBRs. 
Excellent. Good taste. Right. So, um, we John sure did pick up a generous portion of PDRs, and I think it's been pretty cool that the first beer his ex-wife reap is for every time she's come in here has been a PDR. It's just been yeah, kind of stinking cool. Damn good beer. Yeah. And, 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 and I, I figured you would appreciate that little tidbit. <laughs> yeah, my grandfather <laughs> used the tribe of Pap's truck. And that, of course, was the first beer I ever drank. Uh, but, you know, up there in D.C. with all the family and everything, you always drink Pap's or uh, National Bohemian. But since, uh, since Granddad drove the Pap's truck, Pap's was what you had to drink. So, uh, yeah, but that's good brew. That's stuff. And for all these things that you're drinking now with lime in it, you know, no calories, just give me a good old throat burning, headache in the morning beer. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about. Once I put some hair <laughs> on my chest. Well, now, oh now don't take it out on the lime. If you want to put hair on your chest, you just need a lime and a little bit of tequila. Don't blame the lime. Um, yeah, tequila <laughs> put me in jail. <laughs> you know, I haven't had that oh. breakup with tequila yet. Tequila and I are still having a solid relationship. Hey, Liz, I, I've got to uh, ask, how's that hair on your chest thing working? Uh, well, I didn't I know thought I'd ask that. if you brought it up. You, you actually were the second, you know, you, you parroted it. I just thought I'd ask. <laughs> I'm sure well, they're not as gray now. as mine. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd ask. Okay. Oh, man, I am so going to get chastised later. <laughs> and it probably wanted to be from you, Larry. They, they, they're all going to beat me up for doing that, so sorry. Now nah, you're good. I just oh, had sorry. to point Everybody good. Look, seriously, can't, Come on, I can't Mark be Mark. offended. Well, we hope you never are offended by us. But anyway. Oh, God, no. Yeah. But if I'm going to throw that out, in the cousin with the um, Valentine's Day thing, didn't you just have a special event? Liz? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. What? In association really close to Valentine's Day, didn't you just have a special date? I'm really having trouble hearing you. I'm so sorry. I, I apologize, but we are doing a Valentine's Day function, but you just had a special date in your life, correct? Oh, yes, I did. I did. I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. Yes, I did, actually. Uh, last Wednesday, I hit the 12-year mark with my wife. So Valentine's Day and the whole month of February for me is kind of um, – well, I didn't plan this the way I should have. If I had, February would have been a lot different. My anniversary (laughs) is the 6th of February. My wife's birthday is the 8th of February, and we all know that Valentine's Day is the 14th. So February is broke month for Liz. Let's just be honest. I have no money in February, (laughs) and it's the shortest month, you know, in the year, so it's really hard for me. But, yes, I did celebrate a really big date last Wednesday, and, Proud to say that um, my wife and I have been married for six years, together for 12, and best friends for 21 years in August. Wow. Congratulations. Y'all see how I plugged that, right? That was smooth. I, uh, hey, it was smooth. You, you did, tell me you did pass the hugs, honey. <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are smooth and amazing. I love it. I did pass it around the mm-hmm. hug to her. She was very thankful that you guys included her in the conversation. And um, I thought it was very sweet that you guys reached out. And even happy birthdays. A couple of you guys sent happy birthdays to her on her birthday. And, oh, that was so sweet. You guys are adorable, and I love it. Boy, that is not a word we are often associated with. Adorable. <laughs> you know it's not, is it, Todd? Well, when it comes from glitter and sparkle, it's the truth. <laughs> 
And we always expect the truth from the Queen of Sparkle. We sure do. You're the one that brings the joy and cheer into this show. And, uh, <laughs> we're, and we're glad you, well, you, you are. We're glad you're here. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony Dowling, wherever you are, for hooking us up with Liz and uh, and all that and all that good stuff. Yeah, right. But yeah, that, oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, our wishes were sincere. You know that. Oh, yeah. You, you, you know, your family's our family. Your love. So they're love. Well, I love you guys. Thank you for that. Love you, too. You are welcome. Oh, <laughs> this is like the best day ever. But see, this is what Valentine's is all about. Only this isn't on Valentine's Day. This is my point. We can all love each other, and it doesn't have to be a day. It just has to be a life. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're right. somewhere that we, that it qualifies. I, I'm pretty what? sure in Japan it's the 14th right now. Oh, that's true. But speaking of oh, Japan, it is. I'm going to go there one day, so I'll be able to tell you next time I'm in Japan. <laughs> nice. <laughs> be, um, be careful about that food now, Liz. And a half years, <laughs> I think I'm turning Japanese. I think I'm turning Japanese. I really think so. Uh-oh. Gosh. We better be careful about, about things oh, like that. my God. I've I, I got to laugh no. because I remember trying to bounce around to that song in the attic of my mom's house. And I'm sitting there doing a little jumping in place. And I bounce a little bit to the side. And damned if I didn't catch one of the cross beams above me. Oh, oh. Boy, there so were you some were learning stars. about those beams. You were learning about those beams. I really think so. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Yes. You mean boy, well, there were some stars. Oh, yeah. You know, these are all great stories. Papa Stro, do you have something that brings you back that makes you happy? I bet you do. Uh, well, I'm just always been a sucker in little things. Uh, no matter the highs and lows in life you go through, the little things like meeting friends at a restaurant like a Denny's or, or a Waffle House or uh, a Whataburger if you're out west or uh, an In-N-Out Burger if you're out in Cali or, or whatever and uh, just different places. I mean, I, aside from all the – Traveling, you go to different events and different venues and all that. Just the little places you meet, and you meet up with people that you associate as your family. Uh, that not necessarily family, family, but you consider family because you're around them and work with them 24/7. And just uh, little things like meeting up with them, talking to them, hanging out with their their house or apartment or a get together, a social function. Um, just the little things that. No, you you remember telling the road stories, the road trips, whether you're flying or driving, and um, and and the people you meet up. Another another thing I, I it really takes me back is meeting the people, some of the fans and some of the people that you meet at these events around the country and overseas that whose lives you really touch and make a difference at, uh, whether it's a family, whether it's. Uh, uh, Elderly people, whether it's uh, you know adults, whether it's uh, children, especially the kids, because I mean, it, when it, when it, when a child comes up to you and just looks at you like you're the apple of their eye and wants to give you a hug just because just because they want to, I mean, it really it makes the a lot makes a lot of difference and makes means the world. It really does. So it just just solidifies. You know what you do and is is worth something and and makes your gives you a new lease on life, if you will. So I mean, little things like that. That's that's what it's all about to me. You know, Papa Stro, I'm gonna that's tell huge. I'm gonna tell a story on I'm gonna tell a story on you. And this is when I real this is when I learned how to appreciate all the great things that you've done and all the memories you've brought for people. And I bet you'll remember we were sitting there. About three years ago at the Sumter Comic Expo in Sumter, South Carolina, 
and you you and I were sit I was sitting at your table and we were sitting there talking. It wasn't that big of a crowd, and a lady came up, um, kind of a large lady, and she had a little girl with her. And she said, "This is Papa, right?" I said, "Yeah, this is Papa." And she got this big smile on her face, and she said, "You know, the only reason I came here from Columbia." And that was about a, oh, about an hour away by the time you count traffic. The only reason I came here was to see you. You were the best wrestler I ever saw. I never met you, but I saw you, and I always wanted to meet you. And and then I wanted to introduce you to my granddaughter, and her granddaughter had to be all of four. Didn't, you know, wasn't real clear what was going on, but she knew she was being introduced to somebody pretty awesome. And I remember you and Dorothy was there. You went around. You gave her a hug. And I've never seen a smile that big from that grandmother. It's like, this is my hero. And I finally met him, and he was nice, and he gave a hug to my granddaughter. And, I mean, that's a, that's an image I'll never forget. And that made that woman's month, I can guarantee you. And um, it just goes to show that the little things, as you just said, can mean so much to people, and it can make their day. And it t- can take away from all this chatter and all this crap that you hear on Twitter, um, not so much on Facebook. But uh, I remember that, Papa Stro. Do you vaguely remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that was really, really cool. And um, It just it, it really touches the heart. It really does. And, you know, uh, to, to have the experience – have experiences like that in your life I mean I mean it just it there's no words to describe how special that is and I I I really think it's moments like that that kind of bring us all together and realize our value and worth in life and and it it gives us the encouragement to keep on going forward and touching as many lives as we can because I mean basically, basically that's what life's all about making the best of your world and and making a difference in other people's lives as well I am going to call those moments force multipliers because there are times that it's just the little things that make such a big impact. They are force multipliers. Uh, those, Those associated with the military understand what I'm referring to. But you know what? Those little things in life that touch other people are force multipliers because they remember and they apply it. And that's a positive thing. That's a huge thing. We can let negative things impact us, but when we utilize those positive moments, that's a very good thing. Agreed. Very true. Positive, mm-hmm. positive energy, man. It can change the world. And mm-hmm. a bad day and a good day, like like these stories are doing for me. I guess today was my was my selfish topic for for pop culture stars. I wanted to talk about put a little love in your heart, and I got it. So I'm in a better mood. If I'm in a better mood, I hope at least four other people that are my great friends are in a better mood too, because it's uh. Without thinking about the good things, um, we're just we're just doomed to a life of politics. <laughs> oh gosh, I, I'll be quiet. Somebody pick somebody pick up the topic after that one. I need to be I need to be silenced for about ninety seconds. I shouldn't have said that, but so, it's the truth. Liz, talk. I got you on this one. I got you on this one. So if we want a happy story for the day, then I would like to share with you something I experienced last week. Um, I was at a Lowe's because my seven-year-old niece sells Girl Scout cookies. Yes, I have a personal dealer. Mm-hmm. So if you guys need some, just let me know. Um, okay. <laughs> but anyway, so she was outside of the Lowe's in Wake Forest, and that's where she was selling the cookies that particular day. And I went inside Lowe's because I'm going to let you guys in on a secret. As a gay woman, I have to go in Lowe's or Home Depot anytime I'm near there. It's just like my people are there, and it's like a beacon, and it's calling. So I just I had to go in. <laughs> so I looked at some flowers. I looked at some tools. I looked at some stuff that I can't afford that I probably should have. I looked at stuff that I probably could afford but I shouldn't have. Like, 
And anyways, I ended up on this aisle looking at this slideable barn door um, apparatus that you put on, on your wall and you can slide the door instead of having an actual like doorknob that opens it. You can just do the, like the barn door slide. So I was looking at that and I started talking to the gentleman and uh, we were having a good conversation. And the next thing I know, uh, it comes up, uh, you know, I was talking about getting a replacement Gerber tool, a multi-tool, because one of mine got stolen when I was on set. Um, sometime last year, one of my Gerber tools just kind of grew legs or maybe somebody grabbed it. On the it, not, it I don't have it anymore. I'm not trying to blame anybody, but I don't have it anymore. And anyway, so I was just talking to him. I was like, yeah, do you guys have this particular Gerber tool? And I pulled my phone out and I showed it to him because I couldn't find it myself. And I'm pretty handy in Lowe's. I know about where everything is. And I couldn't find it. So I was like, well, let me ask you, have, you know, do you have this particular brand? You guys just out. And he was just like, you know, we don't have that one. Um, but, you know, we have this kind. I said, well, I can't use this kind because, you know, this is, you know, I need, I need this particular kind because that's what I use whenever I'm working. And that's why I need it. And he goes, oh, okay. So uh, he's like, sorry, we don't have those, whatever. So I'm going to look at these plants because that's what I chose to buy my wife for her anniversary because she likes them. So I bought a bunch of plants for her to tend to. And while I'm sitting over there looking at the specific plants that I want to get her, this guy walks up that was over there talking to me about the barn door. And he says, Are, do you have a Gerber tool right now? And I said, no, I don't, I don't have one at the moment because, you know, I've got, I've got to get one to replace the one I lost. And he looks at me, he says, my wife says I have far too many of these. It's practically new. And then he sticks out a brand new, basically, Gerber tool in a pouch. And he says, you can just have mine. It's fine. You know, my heart grew four times that size just in that moment. And I was like, oh, my God, that is so sweet. If people actually had compassion. I mean, and it was just the smallest thing. You know, but but I know because I buy Gerber tools how much it costs. I know you know, how much it would be to buy a new one to replace it. And and the sheer fact that somebody was just like, you have a need, you were done wrong, and I have more than enough, let me offer you something to eliminate what your ailment is. I just thought it was the greatest thing in the world, and I wanted to share that with you guys. I mean, it was just fantastic. Every time I look at that Gerber tool, anytime I pulled it out to use it, all I can think of is this tool brings me happiness. Like, and I don't want to sound like an idiot, but, like, it was given out of compassion, so every time I use it, it brings a positive memory to me. Wow. That's pretty awesome, Liz, and I'm glad you got that take on it. But speaking from a, as a married man, that was probably saving me grief from the spouse. True, true. I totally get that one. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's, but that's well, good. Is, it, 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 but th- that is a great example of a force multiplier. Thank you for bringing that to the table. Just trying to do my part to and help it, you out, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, thank you for personally helping me out, and you, and you gave us our final round of questions because I think the best way we could end this show is for everybody to tell a story of when somebody did something really good for us. I want everybody, when they leave this podcast, whether they're on VSC Nation, iTunes, Tune in, Spotify, or Stitcher. I want them to leave this show with a story that will make them feel good and think about your own story. That's your homework from Dr. John. All right, who wants to go next with a story when someone did something great for you and it made you feel good? And I'm going to go last because I'm the craziest one. But sorry, I'm always crazy here. Somebody go next. Um. I'll throw this out here. The uh, over the course of the last six days, five days, I've gotten um, so much support, so many direct PMs, so many. Um, look, we're right here on VOC Nation. Brady Hicks reached out. The um, and I mean quick. Um, I saw that. My workmates, my workmates that have reached out repeatedly, um, the people that showed up that I have not seen, I have physically not seen them since maybe eight, 1985. Um, the uh, 
folks that I have seen in between that still bring massive personality to play. Um, I had, uh, I took uh, a longtime friend of mine, Don, uh, took a picture of the last three remaining boys of our uh, parent, um, and I reposted it. Um, you know, she she didn't have to do that stuff, but she made sure it happened. All these people that, that responded, reacted to stuff like that, there have been a million force multipliers this last week, and I know I I. I I couldn't even get close to reaching everybody's names, whether it was uh, uh, Lucrecia Abrego, uh, Rich Garcia, the uh, doggone uh, Snooka Tong the, uh, th- that I worked with immediately, Penny May, um, my, na- my neighbor Angela, and doggone sure, Yuki Kanagarian, um, my sister-in-law, Nancy, uh, my nephews, Zach, Jeremy, Anthony, uh, my brother, Mark, the, uh, my brother, John, who took a, boy, he uh, he made a reach this uh, last Monday that was huge, and uh, it's been successful. There, there's just so many force multipliers in my life. The, um, you guys, um, they... Dave doubling up on messages. The uh, you, you guys are my force multipliers. Thank you. And I know I missed a ton. I'm not going to get y'all. I apologize. But big love, gang. Yeah, man. Yeah. All the well, Justin is trying to call me right now while we're on the air. All right. Well, that's that's great. Hey, Papa Stro, what's something good that's happened to you that's really made you feel good in in, the, in this vein? A little different than what we talked about. You got a story for us? You 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 tell the best stories, by the way. You really do. Well, uh, uh, it's uh, grateful to be alive and well. I mean, it's. Uh, just about anything that you can possibly imagine has happened to me through the years has happened to me at one time or another. Uh, just blessed to be family, friends, uh, people around the world that stay in touch from time to time and uh, they hear from every now and then. And just uh, it's been a, it's real. Ble- every day is a blessing. Every day and night's a blessing to be here on this earth. And um, yeah, we're on the topic of you know like Valentine's Day and. Things to be grateful for. I'm 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 grateful for being here, living here in this country, uh, uh, being here in this thing called life, and just experiencing the world and the many things that are in it. And you know, I'm I'm even grateful for all the bad things that's happened to me because if it weren't for the bad things uh, that happened, you can't really appreciate the good things when they come around. And I mean, everything has its purpose. Everything has its place. Everything happens for a reason. So, you know, you just kind of, you take the good and the bad and you, you put it together and you use it. I mean, don't don't run away from it. Don't stray from it. Don't hide from it. Embrace it and make yourself a better person from it. That's a, that's a good piece of advice. That's a good thing. Take, take the good, yeah, take brother, the bad. Because... Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, John. No, I was just saying, yeah, and I'm waiting on what you've got to say, Todd. Well, the Papa Stroh just mentioned the, uh, you know, let's face it, a lot of wisdom comes from bad experiences. You know, we we can, look, we love our good, we embrace it, and we're going to try to repeat it. But the whole thing is, for the bad things that happen, Let's learn from it. What can I do better? What can I, what can I change? What can I, you know, take forward from that in a positive way? Learn from it. 
quit fussing, quit saying woe is me. Learn from it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I had a bad boss. Well, let me tell you, talk about the bad things he did and learn not to do that. Not only not learn not to do that, but what maybe would be alternative to that particular style. Oh, and let's execute some of those alternatives. Let's be the better boss for the next generation. Just saying. That's a good one. That's a good one. Good compliment to what Papa Stro said. Dave Atwell, what you got? Well, what I haven't got is a charge in my phone. I'm not ready to die, so I'll say this, and then I'll go ahead and check out for the evening because uh, I'm down to a raging 4%. Uh, gotcha. But, uh, no, it's, sometimes it's not so much what somebody does for, for you. It's what something does. And uh, uh, thanks to the workplace, I had another giant third day. And uh, it's funny how this morning I was having such a good time just uh, cleaning the house, getting ready for work, and, you know, every couple minutes stop and petting the dogs. Just nothing big. Just rubbing them on their belly, you know, doing whatever, telling them how gorgeous they are because we know how beautiful they are. So uh, <laughs> went to work, and everything just went to hell. So uh, I come home. My phone's dying. I've missed half the show. Uh, looks like I'm going to be eating a Hot Pocket for dinner, so things continue to go mm. south. Yeah, and uh, – I come up, and I open the door up, and what do I got? I got 200 pound of dog just wagging her tail, tickled to death to see me. And uh, I tell you what, you know, the hell with the world. As long as I got my dogs, I'm good to go. Because they, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, no matter how things are going, those dogs are always happy to see me. And it's just nice to know that there's some unconditional love and there's some, uh, you know, uh, so, some genuine, hey, I'm glad to see you. Not, hey, I'm glad to see you. Hey, I need you to do this for me. Uh, <laughs> those dogs. Yeah, they're all just You do and know if that not if you're rubbing, you, me, if you're rubbing you know your work folks on the belly, HR is going to be talking to you. Yeah, there's there's a couple of them over there that I wouldn't rub with a ten foot pole at this point, but no, that's a very good point. I don't need to be rubbing any bellies at work, that's except for my own, of course. But uh, no, before I die, I just want to go ahead and uh, wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day. Be safe, uh, be careful, and uh, like I said, take a break and just. Uh, Try to have a good day, despite everybody's efforts to make sure you don't. Uh, just go on out there and try to enjoy the afternoon. And if if you don't have somebody to hug, just go out there and find a random stranger, do it real fast, and then run like hell before the law catches you. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah, right back to HR, Dave. Good thinking. That's the, good. Um, big love, brother, because, you, you know, you, you, you did the extra mile. Thanks. I'm just... You're one of the many that uh, will get me through this. Thanks. Yeah, man, I feel for you because the darnest thing about it is, you know, we were just speaking on it the night before, and then I get up the next morning, and, you know, I, I see, you know, your brother had slipped on, and uh, I was like, I will, yeah, man. you know, and ain't, ain't that the way it works, you know. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure it's one of those ones where you gain an angel, and it's it's never there's never the right thing to say to anybody when a loved one passes, but uh, you know, uh, sometimes just giving them some space, and a couple of days later, just you know, checking in, going, hey, no need to reply, just thinking about you. Go to hell. Talk to you in a little bit, you know. And you know what? Sometimes <laughs> I've got a story. I've got a story on them. I'm going to throw out, and I'm going to try to do this while you still got battery. The um. So he was always, one of his routines were, I don't have anything to wear, parent teacher conferences, um, plays, blah, 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 blah. So 
we're in there, we're cleaning out the closet, and we're Jamie and I are fairly close in size. Um, and and, and uh, his sons were like, Uncle Todd, you got you, you know what? We know what you do for a living. You could use some more dress clothes. I'm like, hell yes. Um, so they're like, start looking at the stuff. So we start looking at this stuff. And the boys and I are sitting there looking, and we're like, damn, he's got two full suits. He's got 12 really nice dress pants. And they're like, he could never show up at anything because he said he never had dress pants, but he always told us we weren't allowed <laughs> in his room. <laughs> he just didn't want to go. <laughs> Sounds like my, ex- oh. yeah, my excuse. Boy, that's smart. I know that smart ass is sitting up there laughing his ass off at us right now. He's like, yeah, okay, you guys probably figured it out. Worked like a charm, did it? Boy, that was something. That was something. It was just brilliant. It was fun. And, I mean, we sat there and, sure, we could have tried to find a way to be bitter about it, but we were laughing our asses off. We were like, boy, son of a bitch, if he didn't get us. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I can, I can guarantee you that's what they want. I mean, I, I've already said that uh, at my viewing, if anybody cries, they're getting escorted out. I want some beer served. I want some Hendrix playing. I want everybody laughing and cutting up. And if there's nothing else that I would want somebody to say at my viewing, it's, damn, look, he's breathing. Yeah. Damn. Tough Boy, it was something okay. Else. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, I Dave, got it. I, I got it. Yeah. Dave, I'll show up in a Bigfoot mount mask, so don't worry. I know that's what you will. That's what you want me to do, and I'll do it. You know it. Yeah, but, just yeah. have Alan call the climb of the casket with me. He will not only have a Bigfoot mask on, he will have our <laughs> girl's bra on, and he will have Lizard Man feet on. Yeah. <laughs> Throw a couple of glow sticks in my casket for the afterlife, and I'll be good. I'll do. You know? I'll do that. I, I guarantee you that. Well, Dave, thank you. That was a good. That was that was a good Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Hey, I'm. What, I what am technically checking out before I do the old uh, the 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 phone dying, and we have to do the twenty one gun salute. But hey, everybody, happy Valentine's Day. Be safe. Much love to everybody out there, and we will talk to you soon. Good night, gang. Right on. Good night, gang. We'll talk in a little bit. Good night. What's up, Mark? uh, Thanks, Dave. And I guess I'll come on with a short one. Um, You know, I produce festivals and and a few Comic-Cons, and sometimes not everything goes well. And today, I felt like Lizard Man had not been going very well. He was not happy with me. Just nothing was going right with Lizard Man, and met up with Fran Crowley, whose father was Mr. Stevens, the great Button King of South Carolina. We're holding the Lizard Man Festival at the Button King Museum in Lee County. Uh, she and her family are so wonderful. And we got so excited. Papa Stro, you've seen this. We got so excited. I didn't know what to do. She's excited about Lizard Man. I'm excited about Lizard Man. Lizard's Man Lizard Man's excited about Lizard Man. And just her infectious excitement really helped me get through the day it was it had been kind of a kind of a rough day and uh it just really helped speaking with a friend and hanging out a little bit with someone that just was happy and so i gotta thank fran for turning my not so good day into just a grand grand day and i've been looking forward to this show all night so i want to say thank you to my pop culture stars friends i really want to uh as and i think we if anybody listens to this show they'll have a little joy and cheer put in their life so what i'd like to do now as we learned from papa stro years ago still doing it every show we're going to it's plug time so i'm going to go to first of all ladies first um liz what you got to plug I just want to plug us for a few minutes you know i think we're great i think we're a great group of people i think we all have each other's backs i think that you know, if you're listening in, then you really enjoy the camaraderie that we all share, and I want other people to share that and enjoy that as well. So I want to plug us. I want everybody to kind of get out there and just kind of spread the word because we're, you know, personally, I feel like you guys are a really good support team. And for me, I've been through so much already, and it's just the second month of the year. 
and you guys were there for me, you know, just like everybody else. Something comes up, we all kind of swoop in. So I think, you know, we should push us because I think we could be good for other people too. I think we're therapeutic. I agree, Liz. Well, thank you, kind Queen of Sparkle, and we're always glad to have you here with us. You just got kind of mushy today. To... Sorry, guys. That's all right. No, that's fine. Todd, what you got to plug? <laughs> Give me a moment here because this one's going to hurt. The, uh, I'm going to plug my brother Jamie that just passed. The, uh, his major passions growing up were the outdoors. He loved to hunt. He loved to fish. He did both ecologically sound for those that want to friggin' fuss. But, um, you know, he talked about all his failures in life. But the one thing that was a passion above and beyond his thing for the outdoors was being a dad. And I'll be damned if you don't have three friggin' great kids. And uh, it's it's always been a joy when we, I can get back up here and be with them. And it may have sucked why we were here this time. But uh, Zach, Jeremy, and Anthony, you guys are the best part of Jamie. And uh, thank you all for uh, being part of them. And thank you all for helping me celebrate them. And uh, Nancy, too, because uh, you're the mom. So, uh, guys, big hugs, big love. Thank you, sir. That's a great plug. And uh, we're with you. Our thoughts are here with you. Guaranteed. Because Papa Stro, what you got? What you got to plug? Because he's man in showbiz. I'll tell you that. Uh, well, uh, this coming Friday, I'm going to be on set for Supernatural Assassins and the trailer, rather, for a Supernatural Assassins film. Uh, next next week, get back on set for Dust series. Um, of course, with the, my, my podcast I got going on for next week, and I got a couple of fil- uh, other projects I'll be working on pretty soon. I'll be divulging that to everyone once I get the information. Um, uh, getting prepared for the, getting back. Got some wrestling events again in March. Getting right for uh, uh, also a, a special uh, thoughts and prayers out to uh, uh, LA Tank. He um, He's uh, he's having some complications uh, with his. Uh, I, I, I I'm not sure exactly the details, but uh, uh, he. But um, hopefully he's getting better. Um, thought if you can keep him in your thoughts and prayers, for sure. And uh, just wanted to say to everyone everyone to uh have a wonderful valentine's day uh be good to yourselves be good to each other and uh it's just want to let you know you guys really mean a lot to me your family and uh i love each and every one of you and to keep on keep it on do what you do and being the wonderful human beings that you are and it's blessed to be a part of the crew thanks Thank you, sir. And uh, I'll say, as far as my plugs, I love what I do on Thursday night. First of all, tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern, on VOC Nation, I'll be with Papa Stro at WCW Retro, just the coolest the coolest show. I've got great call-in guests and everything. So I look forward to, to being a part of that. I always do. And then tomorrow night at 11 o'clock, uh, Scary Cast, going to be crazy, crazy. Um, we got the world premiere of Devin Tate's uh, – song anybody can hurt somebody uh we're gonna have a, the world premiere of the video we're trying to get wendy ho to come on and then the very very special scary cast co-hosted by papa stro and devin tate we are going to have jen cruz of the she squatchers and she's going to be there tomorrow night telling stories having a grand old time uh rekindling some of the good good times that we had at the tennessee bigfoot conference when papa stro was there and so Really looking forward to that. I've got that all over the internet. So uh, please share it if you when you find a copy and if you're if you liked any 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 of my crazy sites, you'll uh, you'll have it and please share it. Uh, look forward to having Papa Stro 
And Devin there with us tomorrow night, 11 p.m. Eastern time at scarycast.com. Uh, thanks to Brady Hicks and VOC Nation for having us, uh, for having uh, Pop Culture Stars, and for having uh, the live version of Scarycast. We're just, I'm just so grateful to be here with such good people. And Pop Australia, you're right. This is, this is family. And I look forward to this every week because it's fun. It's the one time that I have. I can just hang out and talk with my buddies. So thanks a lot, everybody. Liz, Dave, you and your phone, get it charged. Todd, our thoughts are with you. Papa Stro, keep keep on representing everybody that you do so well, the Dusk Series, WCW Retro, and, of course, Pop Culture Stars. So this is Dr. John saying thank you very much. I will be in touch with absolutely everybody on here as quickly as I can this evening so I can wish you a pre Happy Valentine's Day personally. So thanks a lot. You guys are the best. We'll see you next week. Now, any of you listeners now on Spreaker, on Spotify, on iTunes, on TuneIn, shoot us an email or shoot us a a message, Pop Culture Stars, on Facebook. That's how to get in touch with us. And uh, we look forward to having each one of you back next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Big big thanks, and Brady, love you. Thanks for reaching out, brother.